I'm Tiana. Welcome to my channel. I just got off of work, so excuse me for looking a little... Uh, a lot not great. For those of you who don't know, I'm an ICU nurse, so I work 12-hour shifts. So I just got off of a 12-hour shift. I look like a mess, guys. I'm sorry. Don't judge. I'm already judging myself hard enough. Today I want to talk to you about things that drive your nurse crazy. This is all in good fun. I'm just kidding. If you don't have a sense of humor, please exit out of this video now. However, if you do have a good sense of humor, then welcome. This is where you belong. Subscribe below. <laughs> And I'm not talking about any patient in particular. This is all generalized, all in good fun. Now, I know that when your diabetic friend, when diabetic Debbie comes into the hospital and she calls you up and tells you, these mean people won't give me my cake. I need my chocolate cake. And then, of course, the good friend you are, you're going to go and get a delicious chocolate cake, Portillo's has an amazing chocolate cake. You're gonna go to Portillo's, you're gonna get that chocolate cake, you're gonna bring it to Debbie, Diabetic Debbie, in the hospital, and Diabetic Debbie's blood sugar is going to skyrocket. We're trying to control her blood glucose. Don't bring Diabetic Debbie any sugar, candy, sweets, carbs, no. We are controlling their diet in the hospital to help them recover. You know what likes sugar, bacteria. So when you're just trying to help diabetic Debbie out, bringing her some chocolate cake to make her feel better while she's in the hospital, you're also feeding that bacteria that's got her sick all the sugar it could ever want. When we have patients who are covered in tattoos or covered in piercings, and I've had patients who have had piercing, nipple piercings, piercings in their genitals. No judgment. We don't judge you. Hey, live your life. But don't then look at me like you're absolutely terrified and tell me that you're scared of needles when I'm trying to start an IV. Obviously, you can take a little bit of pain. If you have tattoos and piercings, you're going to be okay. <laughs> but it happens all the time. I go to start an IV and I have a patient who has tattoos and piercings and they're like, oh, I'm so scared of needles. And you're like, really? Come on. Really? <laughs> Guys, there are all kinds of bodily fluids and juices and everything that you can imagine on the hospital floor. You don't want your kids rolling around in those blood juices, pee, urine, feces, spit, blood, everything. The floor is the grossest thing. You will never catch a nurse bringing her child into the hospital and letting them crawl around on the ground. You won't even see us put our purses on the ground. Most nurses don't even wear their shoes home. They leave them at work, they leave them in their car, they leave them in the garage. Stop letting your kids roll around on the ground in the hospital. It's nasty. Guys, don't bring your medications from home. Sure, if you wanna bring your bottle of medication so that you can show the physicians what you take, what dosage it is, how often it is. That's cool. But don't sneak and take it while you're in the hospital. We need to control the medications that you're giving so that we know the strength, we know how you're getting it, when you're getting it, we know if it reacts with the other medications we're giving you. If you're taking some side medications that we don't know about, then you're putting yourself at risk. Hi, I'm in my bedroom, so my lighting may not be good. Hang on. Okay, that might be better. I don't know. <laughs> but I thought of another one. Do you really need all eight people in your room at once? Do you need your parents and every sister and cousin? And Come on. <laughs> we love that you have visitors. Yes, we love when visitors come and cheer our patients up, bring flowers, balloons, Please come, spend time with them, make them feel happy even though they're in the hospital. We welcome that. But two visitors at a time, please, because we're still at work. We need to get in and give you medications at a certain time. Our full head to toe assessments are timed. There are certain times that we need to get things done. And if we are weaving in and out of 
your friends' chairs or trying to reach around you over Auntie Sally's head. I don't know. <laughs> but you get my point. Too many visitors really makes it difficult to care for you. Guys, this one doesn't make sense to me. I don't get this one, but it drives us crazy. You tell us that you have a horrible headache or that your stomach hurts. So we let the doctor know. The doctor comes in and he asks you about that horrible headache or he'll ask you about your stomach pain. And you know what you'll say to the doctor? I'm fine, doctor. My head doesn't hurt at all. My stomach feels great. Why? Why do you do that? The person who has the ability to write you a prescription for that headache or that GI pain, or GI discomfort is right there asking you how they can help you essentially and you're telling them you're fine. And then the minute the doctor leaves the unit, your headache comes back or your stomach hurts again. It... Just tell the doctor what you told us. That's all. That's... And while we're talking about this, guys, be honest and upfront with all of your healthcare professionals, not just your nurses. This one applies to everybody. If you drink six glasses of hard vodka a day, fine. That's cool. We're not judging you. It just helps us to evaluate you better, and it helps us to prepare for what's going to come later when you're not drinking those six glasses a day. You're going to detox. And that starts with you getting confused. If you just start getting confused out of nowhere and we are under the impression that you only have one beer a day, we're going to do a whole neuro workup on you. But if you're upfront and honest, you let us know, hey, I drink this much or I take this medication or I do these street drugs, we can treat you better because one, we're gonna know what's already in your system so we won't give you anything that'll interact poorly with it. And two, we can better plan your health care. So just be upfront and honest with everybody and tell your doctor the same thing you tell your nurse. <laughs> That'll make it a lot easier and you'll get better care, guys. I promise you. I hope it's not too dark in here. I came into my bedroom and then thought of a couple more things. Oh, so actually, now you've seen my a part of my bed, we're getting more and more intimate, guys. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you were able to see the lighter side of things and not take anything I said personally because I do. I love my patients. I love healthcare. I love visitors and family members. Please feel free to let me know down in the comments what you thought of this video and what drives you crazy that we do. What are some nursing things that you cannot stand? I want to hear them. Let me know. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I make new videos every week, and I'd love to have you along. Till next time, bye.